Doug Wiley from Police One. I'm here with John Avery, your sergeant retired from Salinas PD. Um, you are speaking uh, now on the subject of um, suicide, law enforcement officer suicide. What are some of the warning signs? Well, there could be a variety of them. Uh, maybe withdrawing. He's a very active guy. He's always around. He's always doing things with the rest of the squad, rest of the department, and all of a sudden he kind of disappears and you don't see him anymore. Why? You know, what's going on in his life? Does he have financial problems? Is he having marital or relationship problems? Does he start drinking? Maybe drinking a lot more. Uh, where it's past recreational or just casual. Uh, so there's a lot of warning signs that you look at that. Uh, a discussion I had this morning uh, with someone who lost a colleague was he received a phone call from someone he hadn't heard from from a while. And he didn't quite put it together, but then when he talked to others, realized that he had called to say goodbye. Yeah. And he was reaching out to people that were close to him, maybe close within the circle, uh, and kind of like get some closure with people. Right. Um, in addition to withdrawal, the isolation, uh, maybe have this guy that's like, hey man, uh, do you want this? and he's giving away something that's very valuable, very special to him. It could be a handgun, it could be uh, tactical equipment, everything, because he's ridding himself of valuable things. So all these things add up. So not one at a time, but maybe it, you start to see it. Those are indicators that you, you need to have a conversation with someone about, uh, like you said, I mean, just be as direct as you can. You know, well, direct is, is the best part. Um, it, they do talk about it. And then if you're in the business, then you start seeing officers taking some very uh, risk-taking behavior, which they're putting themselves out there, maybe in the hopes that something will happen. Uh, and that, that's another warning sign. Um, it, it's unfortunate. Um, it, one of the things when we target management within this program is management supervisory staff have to be aware of these things too. Mm -hmm. If you have a good connection, if something's bothering you, communications. But I got to tell you, you know, I know officers that have approached their agencies and have said, you know, I'm really having trouble dealing with this, and they don't get a lot of help. So with this program, what we're trying to do is it has to start from the top down. We have to talk about it. We're putting time and money and a lot of resources into these officers to have a productive career. We need to support that. Yeah. And that goes beyond EAP and peer support. That goes to, into programs that goes into um, police chaplaincies and what have you. Yes. Making available to officers a variety of different avenues that they can pursue that's the right one for them. Most people that survive have a good support system. So whether it's family, friends, the agency, it could be a faith-based group. Sometimes I caution people about the faith-based group because most of our clergy, they might get their master's in divinity, but they don't have any suicide prevention training. So one of our pushes in, in training, uh, both my co-trainers are chaplains, is to make sure the faith community has the education and the training to recognize when someone needs a little more help and what they can give them. It's an incredibly important subject. I'm really glad that you're doing all of the training that you're doing. Um, hopefully we can affect positively um, anyone out there who's ever had that kind of horrible thought to, uh, to seek their, the assistance that they need. I hope so too. Doug Wiley, please one.